This video is based on a workshop done on finding scholarly health sciences sources without university access. This seminar is intended for graduating students and alumni and healthcare professionals who are working in the province of Manitoba. My colleague Hal and I attended a session given by uh, another colleague, Maureen Babb, last year on finding scholarly uh, resources without university access. And we thought that there was more to be said about the health sciences. So that's why we developed this particular workshop. Links to this workshop may be found at https colon slash slash libguides.lib.umanitoba.ca slash HSOA. So by the end of this video, I'd like you to know how open access and alumni resources are available to you and can help you discover high quality scholarly information, regardless of your access. You can discover how tools like Library Search, something you're already very familiar with at the University of Manitoba, can be used to locate open access materials. And learn the extent of library services and resources for alumni, citizens, or the general public, and healthcare professionals in the province of Manitoba. Hopefully, you'll discover and learn about some key databases and collections in the field of health sciences that can help you find the evidence-based materials you need to help you make your decisions in the day-to-day -day working lives. Now, since you've graduated or are graduating, you already know what scholarly materials are, but I wanted to share my definition so that you kind of understand why some resources fit in and some resources aren't included in this uh, particular video. So in the world of academia, scholarly means that uh, we are looking, on, looking at materials that are developed for a very specific topic. These things sum up research uh, and explore theories. They're written using scholarly or technical language which may only be understood by those with a thorough grounding in the topic. And they have specific structures, so abstract background setting, problem question methods, uh, discussion, conclusion. These materials are connected to the literature that came before them in the form of citations. And they are most often peer reviewed. Those are the ones that we're primarily interested in anyway. So during university, the University of Manitoba Libraries play a large sum of money to ensure that our students, faculty, and staff have access to scholarly health sciences resources. These come in the form of library subscriptions and purchases that show up in our collections, which include both physical formats and electronic or online formats. This means that the quantity of resources available at the University of Manitoba and universities in general is significant and broad in scope. Because of the wealth of information available at universities, many of the techniques that students learn for finding quality information are bound within that university context and may not be useful after graduation. So keep that in mind. So what happens when you leave? When you graduate, you lose access, sort of, to the vast majority of library resources. Many scholarly resources are behind expensive paywalls and governed by license agreements that we sign with our vendors. But you still have a need for quality information. This is especially true for health professionals. Quality information is required in your professional and your personal life. You still want sources that are accurate you still might need information in the form of evidence to support your clinical decision making, uh, maintain your credentials, and maybe to develop further your expertise. With a loss of library access, many people become lost at sea, unsure of where to find good health uh, resource information. Often, they end up relying on not so great resources, and this comes from having to use generic search engines which promote non-expert material. 
and highly biased information. This can cause problems even for those of us that are trained to access scholarly information. But what about Google? Let's be honest. Most people use Google to search for everything. For your day-to-day -day information needs, this is probably not necessarily a problem, but from a health sciences perspective, it's important to realize that there's no curation of information, and as such, there's no such thing as careful considered selection of high quality materials. You get what Google finds. Search results are algorithmically based, and because the algorithms used are proprietary, we don't know exactly what these algorithms are doing. We don't know how they work. We don't know what's going on in the background. We can make some assumptions though, however, based on our experience with Google. So we figure that results do reflect things like popularity, uh, your search history, your personal location, and marketing. I mean, how else did Google make uh, a significant amount of money last year? And this begs the question, so where should you look? And I think that the answer is, and always should be, libraries and library services. Now here, what you need to do is figure out what libraries you do have access to and what services are available to you that will get you the access to the greatest amount of material available. The Neil John McLean Health Sciences Library at the University of Manitoba not only welcomes our faculty, staff, and students, but also welcomes our alumni. As alumni users, you can get a free library card based on your alumni card, so it's very important for you to get. Uh, and you can use this to access a subset of our electronic resources. While this list of electronic resources is uh, useful to know about, for the health sciences, there's not a lot of content there that's specifically related to health sciences. So it's, it's a good idea to explore it and see what is available that may be of interest to you. You can also borrow library materials, and when you're on site, you can print, scan, and photocopy using your alumni card. We also offer services to the general public. So as a member of the general public, you can get a library card. It is $50 per year. What that card gets you is the ability to borrow materials from our libraries, uh, from all libraries at the University of Manitoba. And you can access electronic materials with that card, but you must be physically on site in a University of Manitoba library, whether that's the Neil John McLean Health Sciences Library or uh, perhaps the Elizabeth Dayful Library at the main Fort Gary campus. And again, while you're physically on site, you can also print, scan, and photocopy materials. For healthcare professionals, we offer a, a wide range of outreach services at the Neil John McLean Health Sciences Library. For example, we have MyNet, which is Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network, which offers services for a large number of the regional health libraries in rural Manitoba. If you're located inside Winnipeg, we have the WRHA Virtual Library, and these offer services and electronic resources for WRHA, HSC, and a number of other hospital clients, physicians, nurses, professional staff, and so forth. And you can get that information on how to access them at the WRHA Library page. There are also many relevant resources and services available through our public library systems, such as at the Winnipeg Public Library. They do have access to a broad range of electronic materials that you can access from home, and it's worth checking out to see what's available to you. Just Google your local public library. Another place to check for libraries and library services is your local workplace. Do you have one where you work? Do you, has your workplace uh, signed license agreements with some of the vendors for uh, health sciences materials that uh, you can access as an employee? Uh, check your local hospital. 
Often they'll have hospital libraries, or again, they will have made arrangements to subscribe to electronic materials on your behalf. Regional health authorities do this as well, and universities and colleges. See if you have a possible affiliation agreement, or if they have public access that you can access. I wanted to point out this amazing professional associations list compiled by the WRHA Virtual Library. From this list, they've gone and reviewed all kinds of Canadian uh, associations and identified exactly what membership gives you access to from those associations. So it's worthwhile taking a look at this list and seeing if there's anything available in your subject area. Now, libraries and library services can help you access the scholarly literature, but maybe you can't access or find a local health sciences library. So what do you do then? The answer to that question is open access collections and databases that are available to you to fill that gap. Now, the concept of open access has been around since 1991, but in some instances, it's not well understood. The whole premise behind open access is universally and freely accessible documents. Open access removes barriers to accessing research, sort of. You still need a computer with internet access to access these resources. So there is a barrier. And lately, one of the prime drivers behind the open access movement is to ensure that publicly funded research is indeed available publicly and not behind a paywall. In open access, the copyright owner grants permission to use, copy, and distribute the publication with attribution. This means that you have to cite it when you use it. And open access materials are deposited in an online repository committed to providing access, long-term archiving, and interoperability. Now, finding open access resources can be a bit challenging, uh, but there are a number of tools that you can use to locate them. First, you can use the University of Manitoba Library Search to find open access materials. You can also uh, access certain databases, collections, and archives of curated resources that prioritize identifying open access content. And there are some browser extensions available for you to install on your browser to seamlessly search for open access versions of the resources you're exploring. So let's take a look first at the University of Manitoba Libraries Library Search. This is open to the general public. So all you have to do to get there is just go to the University of Manitoba Libraries, where it says find materials, you can just put in a search. I'm going to uh, grab and I'll copy and paste in a search on concussions and return to work and return to play so that you can see how this works. From here, if you have access to the University of Manitoba, you can sign in and get access to full text. But if you do not, this right down here, you can select and check open access and hit apply filters. This identifies open access materials in the subject area that you're interested in. And then all you have to do is click full text available from here, under View It, what you're looking for is anything that says Open Access, Unpaywall, or Free, and you can click on the link and it will get you access to that particular journal article. Simple. The next thing to think about is open access in open access collections and databases is free health sciences scholarly databases. So with PubMed, um, it is the largest health sciences database in the world, and it is completely freely available. 
If you click on it, I'm just going to do that return concussion and return to work or return to play search. And from here, what I can do to get access to freely available materials, some of these are identified where you say free PMC article, but you can also filter in PubMed to free full text. And it's only going to surface those materials that are freely available. To get access to them, all you would have to do is just click. And then you can click on free full text to access the article. Another database that I think is really quite good is TRIP. What TRIP provides you access to, it is smaller than PubMed, but it focuses on finding uh, clinical evidence. Some of the cool features about TRIP is that if you have a well-defined PICO question, you can just put in your population intervention comparison and outcome and click search and it will try its best to find relevant materials. Or I can simply just reuse that search that I've been using on concussions and return to work or return to play. And it will show some results. Some of the best features about uh, TRIP is that it surfaces specific types of evidence that we know are really useful in clinical decision making. So things like systematic reviews, you can filter for those. Evidence-based synopses, which are nice. And you can even go down to look at practice guidelines specifically by different countries. So if you can't find something in Canada, you might consider using something from the UK or Australia and New Zealand as they have very similar healthcare um, systems. I also like that it's got this little evidence, evidence pyramid here. So you can tell where on the evidence pyramid the evidence for this particular uh, um, article or item rests. Now, in uh, Rehabilitation Sciences, you have Rehab Data and Pedro, uh, which are worthwhile having a look at. Also, the Native Health Database uh, has some amazing information. It's predominantly US-based, though, so for Canadian context, uh, it, you might not have a lot of material, but it's worth checking out. Lilacs is interesting. It's coming from uh, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, but there's a lot of English articles that, uh, and obviously uh, Spanish articles, uh, that may be of interest. There's going to be a little bit of overlap between PubMed and Lilacs, but there's also some really interesting, unique content in Lilacs that's worth checking out. Yeah. These are free health sciences scholarly collections. Now, they're not exactly what I would call databases, although you can search them. These are more collections of articles or collections of journals. So one of the more popular ones is Biomed Central. You can click on that. And I can, and I can run my search. Notice I'm using a fairly sophisticated search for this, and it will process my request and return a bunch of results from BMC articles, which is a part of Springer Nature. PubMed Central, again, has a listing of uh, journals. This one, a National Center for Biotechnology Information, or the NCBI bookshelf, has a number of books that I've seen physicians citing, uh, especially Stat Pearls, and there's some other ones in there as well that are particularly interesting. So it's worthwhile looking at for the open access uh, books and Public Library of Science. All of these 
are indexed by PubMed. So by searching PubMed, it's going to surface this content. Now, in the health sciences, uh, there are some questions that end up straddling uh, the pure science or the clinical part uh, with perhaps the more social side of uh, health sciences. And that's where the multidisciplinary databases and collections uh, can be really, really useful. The ones that we want to remind you of is Google Scholar, um, which is um, open and freely available. You can just go into Google Scholar. Uh, we're not exactly sure what it searches, but we do know that it searches the health sciences and the sciences relatively well. Again, my sophisticated search uh, seems to work equally well in all of these resources. So you can look and click and see if you can get access to these. Not all of the articles included on here are freely available. That's important to note. So you may uh, happen on things that are behind a paywall, but it's open and, and you can have a look at it. ERIC is really interesting for anyone who's in pediatrics. Um, the K-12, to uh, even though it's focused on K-12 to education, there's a lot of uh, health and mental health uh, issues experienced by school-aged kids and adolescents that gets put into ERIC and sometimes it's a very nice companion to PubMed searching. Another nice uh, academic search engine is BASE, which is coming from uh, Europe, from Germany specifically. And uh, I like it because I've done searches in it and I've been surprised by the results. Um, it's, it's not exactly PubMed, it's looking at a variety of different things, it can handle sophisticated searches, it can look in the entire document, or you can just specify that your search show up specifically in the title. So there's some, some slightly more sophisticated filtering options with BASE, and it's definitely worth having a look at. Oh, and here, you've got access, so you can click on Open Access and specify that if you'd like, and it will adjust your search accordingly. As far as core collections go, um, for open access, you can look at the core repository search. Um, this is really, uh, all of these are very interesting and gets you access to a collection of open access journals. Things like DOAJ um, are, uh, typically showing up in PubMed, but some of these other ones may not necessarily surface. And if you're looking for other repositories specifically, so perhaps an institutional repository where someone might have their work stored, you can go through Open Door and check that out. Now, preprint servers are for yet unpublished work. Uh, and often this work is not yet peer reviewed. So you have to use these preprint servers with caution. However, during the pandemic, uh, MedArchive and BioArchive were probably the biggest resource for emerging healthcare information. Um, news uh, outlets relied on them quite heavily and often ended up having to retract some news items when um, uh, peer review was done and the final output was changed. But it's a good place to go and locate freely open and available materials. Uh, this is Med Archive. Here it's promoting uh, also BioArchive. I can click on that search. I'm just gonna hit add in my search, concussions, and I have 74 results. Meta Archive is the new kid on the block, so it might not have uh, as much content as uh, other archives or preprint servers, like BioArchive, so you might have to search in more than one location for content.
So just a, a quick note on preprint servers is open access. Many subscription-based journals allow published articles to have preprints archived on open access. The definition of preprint can vary. This is often before peer review, although sometimes it can be after peer review, but without the journal formatting. So because preprints may not be peer reviewed, it's wise to be aware that the content may differ significantly from the published version. So keep that in mind as uh, if you are using these materials. So you need to be cautious about the conclusions drawn in preprints, particularly if the topic is hot or contentious. Repositories can contain work that's been published in a journal that allows for hosting of preprints to meet open access requirements. There's many repositories in the world, and the University of Manitoba Libraries hosts one of them called mSpace. This includes over 1,600 submissions from the Reedy Faculty of Health Sciences and growing. To find the repository, uh, which is right for your needs, you may want to use, like I mentioned, the open door which is a repository finding tool. So for mSpace, I can go in there and let's do a search on concussion or concussions. See what that looks like. So I have about 165 results that I can review and access. And finally, another useful tool are browser extensions. These help you locate open access materials. There's two, uh, the open access button and unpaywall. Uh, they both work very similarly. It's a good idea to install at least one of these on your browser. And when you're searching and navigating around the web, these extensions will help point you in the direction of any corresponding open access versions. You can see I've got my um, unpaywall here and my open access button here. I can click on my articles and let's see, I think this one's interesting. I can come here and if I notice, I've got a little flash here from Unpaywall, and it's suggesting that I can get open access to this particular title. So all I have to do is click PDF, and it makes it available to me. So that can be a nice little visual cue on how to access open access materials. That's all the tips I have for today on how to access scholarly health sciences materials without university access. Hal and I would like to thank Maureen Babb for her generosity in sharing the slides that she developed for a broader presentation done last year. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at healthlibrary.umanitoba.ca.